Sunday, uh, August 9th, 2020. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. And welcome to Comes Out About the Bear Podcast of Indetermined Length, episode number uh, 564 and only in 20 days. Mm. 20 days until I turn the ripe old age That's two times that number So in 2020 you'll be 40 Yeah 20 plus 20 yeah. Equals 40 Yeah. Which means you were it's born in 80 In 20 days Which means yeah he was born in 80 Right See and if you add The first three digits of the year 2 plus 0 plus 2 you get 4 which is also the tens digit of how old I'll be. And the ones digit is my ones digit for how old I'll be. <gasps> you could also just add 20 plus 20 to get 40. Yeah, but you, you, I was to figure out my birth. <laughs> because next year, you know, go 2 plus 0 plus 2, you get 4, and then you're 1, 41. First, you're first 40. 20, okay. First 20 years of my life was easy because it was just like the ones digit. Then it was like like the uh, thousands digit and the ones digit. And then, the, then you keep doing that for like, don't you dare spell my name wrong. I wasn't spelling your name. You, I was you going to. to. I changed my mind. <laughs> and you were That's about to why spell I it stopped. Wrong. Anyways, moving on. Gary. Uh, oh, oh, wait a minute. Hold on. I got a thing. I got a thing. It's, it's, it's that time again. Just eat it, eat it. So, uh, let's talk about food. Gary, uh, what specifically <laughs> are we talking about food this week? Uh, so in our new series, let's talk about food. Topic is guilty pleasures. Ooh. All right. So, Mr. Damon, but, if you would like to be, or Mr. Rogers for the moment, and give us the definition. Oh, sure. Of course. Because <laughs> um, um, <laughs> you would do that if we had, didn't have it written down here anyways. Also true. Um, it is a noun. Something, such as a movie, television program, or piece of music, that one enjoys despite feeling that it is not generally held in high regard. It can be. It can also be used to refer to one's taste for foods that are considered to be advisable to avoid, especially for health reasons. Uh huh. Guilty pleasure. So, when I thought of this as a topic, mm -hmm. and then I read the definition, I became very annoyed. <gasps> because I think when people talk about or make a list or answer the question like what is your guilty pleasure when it comes to food they do not apply this definition very much yeah I mean at least in regards to especially in regards to food I, mean, I will I give it that sometimes they, they would like the little dairy snack cakes well, right, like, here's, like, so, I mean, if I was to apply the definition, I guess I could say Jenny's ice cream, for me, is a guilty pleasure. Because okay. it's a food that could be considered avoidable, especially for health reasons, because it is typically made with animal fats, dairy, other ingredients. And yet, it is one of the few ice cream companies that, like, use locally, like, resourced ingredients and, mm -hmm. like, you know, I mean, it does everything as much as it can to make really great product on the up and up. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that's where I'm kind of annoyed because it <laughs> seems like, you know, any bad food, like, the stuff that's not good for you that you enjoy, therefore, should be a guilty pleasure. And I'm kind of like, mm, I call shenanigans. Okay. There's a lot of food out there that I like 
that is not necessarily yeah. healthy, but I eat it and I don't consider it a guilty pleasure. Like I don't feel guilty about eating it. Mm -hmm. I find pleasure in it, but that's because I'm a very orally fixated person and I enjoy putting things in my mouth and that's how that works. So I don't, <laughs> right. So I like don't <laughs> take issue with eating like very mm -hmm. often, especially like with things that I enjoy the taste of. That's kind of, I mean, I'm, I'm maybe I'm too much of a literalist, you know, but that's kind of how I brought myself up over the decades, especially when I found out I had the power mm -hmm. to make those decisions. Yeah. You know, like here's an anecdote. My great great grandfather, or sorry, my my great grandfather said to my dad, his grandfather had said to him once about drinking coffee. And he said, um, you should only drink coffee black because that's the way it is made. You don't doctor it up with all the rest of that shit. Um, and it's because he had been in the World War and you didn't mm -hmm. get cream and sugar. Like you were lucky you got coffee at all. Mm -hmm. And I consequently discovered very young that I don't really care for coffee. And every time I give my reason behind it, I see the flickering of a light bulb go off for coffee drinkers and it amuses me. Because I say, I don't drink coffee, really, because I don't like the taste of it. I have a weird rule. I don't put things in my mouth that I don't like the taste of. I mean, that's a good rule. So I don't drink gasoline. Uh, <laughs> you know, like, I mean, I just, if I don't care for the taste of it, then I don't usually eat it or drink it. Like, that's put just... Or suck on it. Um, so... <laughs> You know, just saying. Uh, uh, true story. <laughs> I know um, this is not talk about food, but we we've been there. We have been there. I have had some nasty I mean, dick in my past when I was much younger and didn't have such principles. I will own that. Is it considered something you eat? I was. If I, I swallow your on. jizz, I am eating it. I don't know what else <laughs> you want to call that. What? Here's the content you came for, kids. Hope you enjoy the show. Um, <laughs> I got a lot of sleep last night, apparently. I have not put any liquor in my drink, so there. You're Here just, we are. You're just full of recharged energy. And mm -hmm. not tummies. That's the way that is going. So mm -hmm. anyways, the point of this topic, my thing is, is like I was not happy about the definition because mm -hmm. I thought we were going to come up with personal lists in which we said, this is my guilty pleasure. Like I was kind of thinking guilty pleasures might be things that you sneak off to eat that like uh -huh. you privately quietly, like don't reveal that yeah. you eat. Um, and that's kind of what they're... like the first part of the definition is kind of, kind of hinting to mm -hmm. is like something that people, you don't want people to necessarily know that you enjoy are are if that's kind of what the first part of the definition is like a movie or a tv show or something like ah eh, like we were talking in pre-show jeff mentioned hudson hawk i've never seen it and i doubt it ever will so that's just kind of <laughs> that, see it once, just, at I mean, once at least once that no. sandra burst <laughs> with bruce willis in it it's got a star-studded cast you know it's what delightful to apply that, the, to apply that principle is to say to every top and every bottom out there, you got to do the other thing once. And I'm not taking I've, issue I've with that. Both, so. I'm just saying. That's the principle of like, how can you know you don't like it unless you try it? So that's yeah. and, and and agreed, a true. Uh -huh. <laughs> Fair. Yeah, but, 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 but you, you, you have to admit, uh, uh, topping and bottoming is is very different than watching a movie. I, mm, mm. I mean, the preparation <laughs> period mean, might be a little shorter for watching a movie, but I mean, you're still making a commitment and, and a conscious decision, I would think, so. Yeah, I mean, it's true. But, it, and, and the but, nice, yeah. nice thing is, is, is if you're watch, watching the movie, it, it, it's something you can stop any time, and you're not going to really lose anything but the, besides the time that you did. Unless, watch you're watching, unless you're watching the movie live. Anyway. Watch the trailer. And I maybe, mean, maybe you might become intrigued and want to watch it. And you could like watch the. You could. I guess you could watch a movie and then just stop watching the movie and do something else. I mean, that's no one's stopping you. Just like you could start having sex and then stop at any moment. Mm -hmm. Also true. Consent. Uh, 
Boom. Um, <laughs> we, we got oh, I'm, the, I'm the odd one out because I'm not wearing a consent shirt. <laughs> Anyways. It's okay. It's I have the first demo. I was not made aware Kirsty. there was a dress code today. <laughs> to be fair, uh, I have Bear. He has drag. So the, the question is, do you have one in the other ones? Oh, he has. He does. No. Oh, wait. No, you don't. You no, I bear, don't. don't it has multiple. I was just going to say. Yeah, I don't have. Well, I have those two. I don't have leather or pup. Yeah. So. Okay. So one of these, one of these days, we're gonna have to uh, <gasps> dress code. I just realized we don't have like ace or buy. Uh oh. Uh oh. We might have, we might have to on that. I mean, it, uh -oh. to be fair, if you look at the uh, uh, critical role. Uh, 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 don't forget to love each other shirt. They have 11 different D20s with uh, uh, different pride colors. So technically, we would probably need to have 11 different ones. I don't know. Well, give us time. I mean, potentially. <laughs> we could have more. But anyway, right. sidetrack, moving back to the regular topic. Um, so <laughs> uh, anyways, while, while researching about the definition online, I actually found this article that we're going to link um, by uh, Karina Inkster. It's her website. Apparently, she's the, like this fitness personal trainer or something or other. Apparently, she's also a vegetarian. But she has an article um, titled, let me go back, uh, Let's Kill the Term Guilty Pleasure When It Comes to Food. And I was like, here, here. Um, I don't know anything about her. but I So I, anyways, I read the article. Uh, it's all right. It's not too long of a read. But my favorite part is this one paragraph. And she just says, why should anyone feel guilty about things that bring them enjoyment, especially food? You're making the assumption that I feel guilty every time I have a treat, air quoted, treat food. How fucked up is that? Mm hmm And that's kind of the thing I find to kind of feel about it for sure. Like, we, should, we shouldn't feel guilty about certain things that we eat. I understand that not everything is healthy for you, but not everything is healthy for you. Like, we don't eat just to be healthy. I mean, some people do, and that's fine. But, you know, we no, not everyone eats to be healthy. Not everyone eats to 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 um, get the bare, like, the, the, nutri the bare minimum of nutrients that you need to sustain your life for the day, you know. Yeah. Um, I mean, yes, there are people that go to those extremes and are counting the calories and making sure that they're eating the exact number of calories they're supposed to eat in a day and all of that shit. But um, I don't think that's everyone. And I think the issue, like you, like she mentions, is like calling something guilty when it's something that you like or enjoy or want to put in your you know mouth hole shouldn't be a big deal. It can be a deal, but it shouldn't be a big deal. I'm speaking as someone who's, you know, pre-diabetic and you know needs to take right. think about what he's putting in his body in some ways, you know. Right. Um, but you should, you know, you shouldn't feel bad for eating something you like. True. Unless you eat it too much. I think one of the things he mentions, like, you know, maybe doing it in moderation is the best way to kind of go. Yeah, I, th I think part of it is, uh, part of it with the, is that I think guilty pleasure is really kind of, I, I think it was just brought over into food from all these other categories. Mm -hmm. Because like my guilty pleasure, one of my guilty pleasure movies is Hudson Hawk because a lot of people think it's a bad movie I can understand how they see it's a bad movie, but I'd love it. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not denying that you think it's a bad movie. I think it's great. Um, it, it, but it's one of those things where I think there that people were trying to bring that into uh, food and being like, okay, so if we can do this for music and movies, which I have preferences, uh, then food which people have preferences for like i don't like fish mm -hmm. not, not not entirely in general because i kind of like 
like tuna, but usually like the can slash pouch tuna sort of thing. But yeah. in any case, uh, fish in general, like if you want to serve me salmon, I'm going to be like, ew, gross, I'm not going to eat that. Mm. Um, but because we have those preferences when it comes to food, we put that as uh, as there's got to be some sort of guilty pleasure. The only thing is that when it comes to food, I don't think it quite works as it would for movie music and movies and, and those mm -hmm. things. Um, yeah. So they're they're using the term, but it's kind of it, but really it's what really what they're meaning in the, in regards to food is more of what are those foods that you find extra pleasurable to eat and, and enjoy uh, or your indulgences. Mm -hmm. Well, indulge, so indulge on. it brings up, right. And, and, and that brings up a really good, interesting point. Cause here's my thing. I was just looking up online. What is the opposite of guilt or guilty? And the opposite definition is innocent. So mm -hmm. what the fuck is an innocent food? <laughs> or an innocent pleasurable food. Like, for real, like, huh? Like, how do, how does someone find the food innocent? I'm like, mm, well, I think we should just drop it as a as a concept and choose other wording. Yeah, when I think when people, if you were to think of quote unquote innocent food, like the my mind when you said it, I later immediately went to things like, like, um fresh fruits and vegetables, you know, start like thinking about like the food pyramid and that shit, like fresh fruits and vegetables, you know, um, uh, whole grains and, and stuff that you can and should be indulging in, you know, you know, more regularly. Ooh, words are hard to say. Innocent, <laughs> innocent, pleasure. Uh, innocent pleasure. I like Cheerios. Uh. Mm. Something that's relatively healthy. It's cereal. It's made of grains. Mm -hmm. I do like lettuce. I do like salads. Of course, to be fair, whenever I get a salad, I like uh, uh, dousing it in blue cheese dressing and uh, Western French dressing. Actually, Western dressing. Exactly. It's not really French dressing. It's just kind of French dressing adjacent. Mm -hmm. But it's called Western. It used to be its own company, but it was then bought by Wishbone, so it's a part of the Wishbone brands, and it's really hard to find out here in, in Texas. Hmm. Good to know. I'd not heard of that before. Western so, French dressing. That's that's what I grew up on was blue cheese and French dressing. For salads. But which like that I've heard of, of before. Kind of like mix it all together. I've heard, yeah, that I've heard of. In fact, my best friend from high school, he was big on that. Like, he would go, when we would go out to eat, like, his mom, my mom, and then the two of us, he classically would always order, like, a salad, but he would want red French dressing and blue cheese crumble. If they could get both, that's how he would make that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I and I was always like, eh. Not just blue cheese, but blue cheese dressing. Oh. Well, <laughs> you're just a freak. So. <laughs> <laughs> Guilty pleasure. Like we all are. There we go. Kind well, I mean, really, yeah, I mean, <laughs> so, I mean, I just, I think that we should come up with different terms. Like, I, I thought it was interesting, Jeff, you were talking about, like, indulgence. And I'm like, okay, that's different because indulgence says to me, like, this is not a thing you have on the reg. Mm -hmm. Like, this is a thing that is, like, it's, it is a special treat. It's a, like, maybe for a, a monumental kind of thing or, like, I'm having a blue depressive day, so god damn it, I'm gonna go eat blank. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. not an every day, every week, every month, whatever kind of uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. item, so to speak. Yeah. It's something you can have that you I'm gonna say long for, and that's actually what I'm gonna go with. That you long for, but you like, because you know you can't you can't have it. Like you said, you are you I don't want to say shouldn't. I'm going to say shouldn't. You shouldn't have on the regular. Like maybe we shouldn't have on the regular. Maybe that's kind of falling into kind of the guilty pleasure thing. But to me, it's a it's a a in a it gives you good like 
mouth feels. It makes you feel good when you have it, but you know if you have too much of it, um, it's going to be a a problem. Are we talking about food or sex? Yes. I'm talking about food. I don't know what okay. you're thinking. I'm talking about food. Well, you were just describing <laughs> like good mouth feels. That, like you, you know, like if you have too much of it, it could be a problem. And I'm like, well, yeah. Like I just, <laughs> I got done reading last night on Twitter about how <laughs> someone who is semi well known in the U.S. drag community accidentally on their drag Twitter posted something that was meant to go on their alt account, and it was about how they miss sucking dick and having a <laughs> sore throat afterwards. And it's not because of strep throat. And I was like, do tell. Like, <laughs> like, I was like, wow, okay. Like, and this is the thing. Like, I didn't know that. Apparently, there are some people who really get, like, like, it's a reward or something. I don't know. But, so. <laughs> it, it, it's like, <laughs> if they get this ac- after effect, they knew they had a good time because they liked what, liked the, act- the actions that were happening uh, before they got that. So before I mean, he had a sore throat, he was uh, probably getting face fucked by a, a big dick or something like that. I mean, right. I, 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 the more I thought about it, I was like, well, I guess there are guys out there who like get, you know, fucked that want to walk bow legged for a day or two. I don't know, you know, or put a little like, you know, ring pillow on their chair or something. It, it um, just means that they had a good time. It was like, worth it. For the record, <laughs> listeners and viewers, I think I've broken Damon. Um, <laughs> I, I, and I'm just exasper, exacer, exacerbating it. Well, as opposed to masturbating to it, yeah. And so I'm a master debater, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> I'm gonna blame it on Corona. That's what I'm gonna blame it on. That's all. Oh, I'm blame it on. Here we go. Blaming it on the Corona. <laughs> this is called normal. Uh. I'm in a mood today. I don't know what the mood is. But <laughs> I, I think you're. I, I I think someone's in a mood for sure, Mr. Gary. <laughs> Anyways, food. It's been a long time, y'all. I'm gonna say. Um, <laughs> too damn long. <laughs> yeah. I, so I think if you know, if we were to say that there are indulgent things, um, mm-hmm. I think it's more accurate to say things that you cannot get often or. Mm-hmm. For whatever the reason is, like it has a seasonality to it. It's not in your area. You have to travel. Like, it's made by one specific person at a specific time. I don't know. Um, yeah. To me, that makes more sense uh, to look at it through that lens, because yeah. when you get to have it, I don't think you feel guilty at all about it, and you sure as hell are pleasured. So, mm-hmm. your rare indulgences. Yeah, I think that's a more fair like way to kind of look at for, it. For, so for me, crosses chocolates. See, that's right. You've talked I ha- about. That. I have to ship them from. I I would have to ship them or have them shipped from uh, Socrates, New York. Right. So. Oh wait, that I spelled it wrong. And and for me, I will say this. Uh, Damon knows what I'm probably going to say because it's his neck of the woods. Geta. Um, is one of those things that I honestly like and enjoy, but I only get it when I happen to be in the Cincinnati, you know, tri-state region in the southwest corner of Ohio. But even then, it's not every time I go there. You know, it's it's more that my friends who I'm with know that I like it and they may prepare it. Or if I happen to go out and there's breakfast, like if it's a side dish, like available, I will fucking order that shit. Um, you know, it's just a, it's a thing. It's kind of like... And for those that don't know what <laughs> Geta is, this is not a fair um, analogy, but if you are familiar with pork roll or Taylor ham in the Philly, New Jersey region, that gives you some understanding of like how there are foods of regionality that you can only get in a certain place. And then even then there might be some controversy, but mm-hmm. that being said, so. <laughs> Owen said in our live chat, I can't think of a food I feel guilty about. It's, if it's good, I'll eat it. Here, here. I mean... True. Yeah. Now, like, but I by the way, this... I would not be putting Geta in my mouth ever. I've tried it. I have tried it, and I've tried it well made, and I've tried it not well made, and neither time I enjoyed it. So, oh, okay. All for you, Gary. 
Thanks. Kid, one of my, I'll take your portion. One of my guilty pleasures as a, as a kid is I would make myself a sandwich. I would have one slice of bread. I would put mayo on that on that one slice. On the other slice, I would put mayo, and then I would put a slice of bologna and some sliced pickles, and I would eat a bologna and pickle mayonnaise sandwich. There was a lot of mayonnaise. Actually, I I I would then put a layer of mayonnaise on the bologna before I put the pickles on. So I had like three layers of uh, uh, mayonnaise. It's usually Miracle Whip eh. because we like Miracle Whip in our house. Which is actually salad dressing, not mayonnaise. <laughs> I, well, it, even nowadays, if, I, if I'm making like a, a just like a regular <laughs> sandwich, saying. if I'm usually a regular but sandwich, instead of Miracle Whip or mayonnaise, I would use, well, mayonnaise is technically salad dressing too, but we won't get into that. Um, but I will even use blue cheese dressing instead of mayonnaise as a, as a spread in a sandwich. Now, that is something I have done that people might consider alternative or different. I have used dressings as dips. Mm -hmm. Like, I am notorious for, like, dipping things in salad dressing <laughs> that are not salad items. Well, <laughs> you also have to, to think, like, uh, uh, buffalo wings ranch. And blue cheese are common dips for mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Like I've used salad dressings as a spread when making like a, you know, like a, um, a wrap. Sorry. I was having a moment. My brain was failing me because I was going to call it, you know, a cold soft taco burrito thing. <laughs> AKA a wrap yeah. because we have to give it a different term when it's cold versus hot apparently. It's, it's a burrito. I mean, as far as I know, burritos are, are just a, are anything that's normally wrapped. But usually it's uh, a hot. Usually it's a hot. Yeah. Hot. So, but, uh, Actually, um, um, Din Din in the chat um, kind of mentioned something that I think of. Like, you know, unless the food is too expensive. Like, sometimes, like, that's something. Like, I, I've had the Krause's chocolates as an example. Because mm -hmm. uh, remember, I got them at one point in time. They are pricey. They are good. Shipping, Don't get me wrong. And then they're shipping. Like and so like, because I went the other day. I think, I think after one of the last times you mentioned, I was like, oh, that would be really cool to kind of, because I haven't had it in a while, and it would be really cool to you know try it again. Because I remember it being really good. Like I remember enjoying it. Mm -hmm. um, and I went to try and like order something. I was like. I looked at the price and I was like, Ooh, girl. Mm, no, I, uh, not well, right now. Box? Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not right now. No, thank you. I mean, these, um, these are, uh, they're, they're not your normal, like, like, uh, yeah, they're, uh, they're, uh, they're, 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 they're well made day. and they're good. Yeah. And they're, and they're good. Don't give like, that's, I do it like, which is part, which is part of what's for, raising the price. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. That, that's why they're better is because because of how they're handled versus yeah. like getting getting your regular right. box chocolates well, that you get I mean, cost, cost is definitively a factor for people. Like, mm -hmm. so I will say this. I have learned recently that Spam comes in a whole variety of flavors. And most of them I did not know about. I was aware of classic Spam. I was aware of low-sodium Spam. Um, I was aware that uh, I think I knew about the bacon spam. Mm -hmm. And then my father, a year or so ago, was talking to me about the turkey spam. And I was like, the what? And he's like, yeah, but it's really hard to find. And it only seems to come around Thanksgiving or whatever. And he is honest to what you believe in. It does exist. But I am much more intrigued in chorizo spam. Mm. Because I mm. like chorizo sausages for the most part. So I like that flavoring. I like like the, the pepper, the paprika. Like I was like so excited. So I looked it up online because I can't get it locally. And I'm sorry. Like if there's an indulgence where the dollar is a factor, if I was getting the extra unemployment benefit, I might have the coin to pay for the shipping plus like buying a whole <laughs> fucking case of this shit. But no, girl. Guys. I can, I can just everyone in between. It's not happening. I could just walk over there and pick up some chorizo. In fact, I made a, uh, I made some of my uh, mac and cheese hot dish um, using chorizo one time. I, I think what he, your wedding is actually specifically chorizo spam. 
Right. That's right. what I'm saying is like it's a version of spam. I would like to try it because I like spam. I grew up on spam. Spam does not bother me in the least bit. For some people, that is an absolute no go. And I'm like, no, like like to me, that is perhaps a food in this category. Like I don't really buy it often um, because it is rather salty or high in sodium. Um, and I also in particular, like I want it oh, very Christ. well cooked. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, like kind of like Geta as a reference or like, you know, a lot of um, certain kind of like uh, mixed meat products. I don't know how to say mm -hmm. it. Uh, like it has to have a nice crust, like crust on it, like that Maillard effect. Like it really needs to be brown. Like it just needs to have that kind of aspect to it. Mm -hmm. So. But, like, I'm not spending all that money. So I understand. Like, Jesus I hear what you're Christ. saying, David, when you're like, I am not buying C's chocolate because fuck the shipping Christ, you know, or whatever. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, I mean, I... Side note uh, on spam, uh, they're, uh, I just pulled up the page with it, and they've got a shit ton of stuff. They, oh, got, yeah. They've got spam classics, spam, spam light, spam less sodium, spam with real Hormel bacon, spam oven roasted <laughs> turkey, spam hickory smoke. Oh, I know. Uh, spicy jalapeno teriyaki. I know. Black pepper chorizo, as you said. Portuguese sausage, garlic, uh, to uh, pino. We we're, we're yes. There's a lot of them. We are Jeez. aware. Like, yeah, I just said a that lot. a moment ago. Yeah, like I just went, but like I just literally pulled up, like went to Amazon and pulled up, like there's a tw spam large um, twelve. Spam lover sampler of 12 ounce cans and it's 12 different flavors and it is 96 fucking dollars. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, that's very okay. simple for 12 of them, so. Right. Yeah. Here's my, here's, here's my beef, no pun intended. So when I go to buy spam and I could buy it at the local store and I could get it for about $4 a can, maybe $3. That means if I was to buy a dozen of them, it would be around $4. Forty dollars, roughly. Mm -hmm. I'm not spending more than two times that to get twelve. Like that's obviously an astronomical markup. Not happening. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. So. But yeah. So that's. But I get what you mean. What we're kind of getting at, like that whole the the price sometimes could be a thing. Um. Uh. I'm. I know my like indulgences are usually um, baked goods and. One of the benefits I have right now, and actually good and bad, is that I have a uh, partner who enjoys baking. So um, I tend to get a lot of good, well-made um, dessert type things. Uh, does it mean that that's all I would want new? No. Because um, there are things like he doesn't always make, you know. And um, one of the things he does in particular particular that I really enjoy um, and it only he usually only does it around the holidays is his pumpkin cheesecake and that my dear is delightful. A, a delightful pleasure quite because he doesn't just make a graham cracker crust no 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 he uses gingerbread cookies and makes a gingerbread crust and that just it I don't I don't it's just it just adds another flavor element to the pumpkin cheesecake. Yes. By the way, October, November, we will probably have an episode on pumpkin spice. Are you ready? <laughs> yes. I would have to say one of my indulgences are like little Debbie's fever tea cakes. I love those things. Oh yeah. Right, so I mean, like, if you're going to talk about like snacky stuff, sorry, Damon. Um, I certainly think that we could come up with some things, you know, that are uh, little indulgences. Go ahead, Damon. Sorry. No, I just saw like Denon's mention of like, like that's the thing. Like he mentions the imported wagyu beef. Like, oh my god, yeah. Think of like things you. It's something that you can't normally have. Like you have to get it in. You have to have it shipped in. It's well, you know, sent out. Like you were talking about Geta, but his is like, you know, we're also talking about cost and price and whatever. Like, right. I think nowadays, like, I know for me, like there was a whole Kobe beef thing here in the States for a long time that it was such a like super indulgent like thing to have. Um, right. Although I think, I think but, uh, Kobe beef in 
Kobe beef is only in Japan. Like literally yes. only in Japan. If it get, leaves Japan, I think it becomes a Wagyu. Well, that's the whole idea behind, um, like if you think about champagne. Well, like champagne, it's technically not champagne. champagne. It's really the the grapes have to grow in the region of Champagne, France. Yeah. Right? Right. So, so but a, that that can be exported thing. and everything. But I think if it gets exported, even if the the beef was grown and raised in Japan, I don't know. I don't remember the specifics on how it works. Kobe beef is well. What, what? Yeah. <laughs> well, whatever. I mean, I'm just giving that idea as. You know, it's indulgent. It's you know, there are things like if you look at a on a menu, if you're at a fine restaurant or a finer restaurant, and you kind of see that as like the main star of the dish, as it were, like oh, that's really interesting. That's something I wouldn't have. That's something exotic or something new um, that I've not tasted before. I I think for me that anything that I really find pleasurable doesn't necessarily mean that it's expensive. I mean, besides yeah. Krause's chocolates, a lot of the stuff that I find pleasurable are just, like, some of the simple things in life. Like, uh, I just recently did my grocery shopping and I ordered a big old thing of, of uh, 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 goldfish crackers. Mm-hmm. Which I find indulgent. I pour bunch of it it's like a big old like carton milk carton ish type thing square i just pour it out into a bowl and <laughs> like a different version of popcorn buttered popcorn it's these type of things that are my quote-unquote guilty pleasures it's mm. not expensive stuff so while well, expense can be a cost for for getting anything into what would be a guilty pleasure, I don't think that the quote unquote guilty pleasures, the the indulgences, necessarily need to be something like expense can be a factor because because that provides rarity and and everything, but I don't think that's a necessity. Well, and I don't disagree. I mean, I think there are a lot of factors, cost definitely being one of them, because I think there's, I've had some really good food that costs a hell of a lot more than what I can get at the corner shop, you know? Um, mm-hmm. But there are also yeah. things, you know, that are relatively less in cost, you know, they're cheaply mm-hmm. made, therefore they don't cost much. Um, yeah. That can also be a bit of an indulgence in a way. Like I think of, because um, you were mentioning earlier, did you say Hostess or Little Debbie? He said Little Debbie. Little Debbie. Okay. Because they're all kind of the same family. Like, what is yeah. it? Tasty same Cakes. And yes. Things. Tasty Cake. Oh, my God. Tasty Cakes. So there's a couple different companies um, that make stuff. But, uh, like, I enjoy the little oatmeal cream pie, like, sandwich, mm-hmm. individually wrapped things. Um, but I don't really eat them often. Like, it's a once in a like, blue moon kind of thing. See you at the corner store and you'd be like, oh, hey. That sounds cool. Actually, I need to get a um, a uh, the fuck do we call that? Um, craving. Um, mm-hmm. I was like, pregnant women get them all the time. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck are they? Uh, so you know, like every once in a blue moon, I'll go through like a little phase. Like I haven't done one in, a, in quite a while, but every once in a while, I'll get an orange juice like craving, like a kick, because I don't really drink orange juice regularly or often, um, especially because the majority of orange juice in the U.S. is concentrated, reconstituted orange juice, so it's really sweet. Um, if you've ever had fresh orange juice which my great grandparents used to live in florida so every winter we'd go down and we'd like pick you know their uh fruits from their trees so it's like i've had fresh grapefruit juice for breakfast in the morning and orange juice and tangelos and stuff so it's very different it's very watery in comparison so like, if i go to a restaurant or something and i didn't like they don't have apple juice or something you know and i'm kind of been thinking about like orange juice i will ask them for orange juice and like an extra glass and a glass of water and i will literally like have and half the orange juice and the water 
to make it like more realistic. And I usually don't drink only orange juice because I'm just like, no, it's too much. Like, just mm. yeah. it's too much sugar. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, there's definitely some things. But you know, we're, we're so spoiled in the U.S. Like you could practically have anything at any time. So yeah. Well, you were talking about little Debbie's, and I was just it. like, yeah, like I literally could just like, I mean, it would take a little bit. I had to walk or maybe, you know, get Jim to drive me, like, to go <laughs> up the street and get something like that. Listen to you. That one, You're like, that one. I have to get out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> hey, honey, we're in quarantine. That's a thing. <laughs> um, For some people. But, uh, yeah, but like, I, you know, it's something, you know, when you think about like whole, like the, the idea about it, like an indulgence or a good pleasure kind of thing, sometimes we do think about it not being accessible, but sometimes it is. You know, when like I talked about, baked goods are like my big thing, and um, it, like if I wanted a brownie, I could go to the store and make get a brownie mix and be happy because it is while it is a you know basically a you know a mix of you know oil and whatever and brownie and right. you know the mix it's still a, enough of a brownie once i've baked it that i enjoy it uh, have i had brownies from scratch yes and i love them um uh, but again that's kind of falling into the like um not as always accessible thing but i could get a brownie if i wanted a brownie i could get like a cookie if i wanted a cookie i could get a donut if i wanted a donut because i could literally like i'm literally thinking like oh i can just go over here to to dunkin donuts or i could or oh, hell i could go to the the udf here up the street and get a brownie that they've not just like the little debbie or hostess or whatever like cousin brownie bullshit i can get like an actual brownie at this like udf or a fucking shake <laughs> like <laughs> and I and I think that's part of the issue that as Americans, like I think we take a lot for granted because mm -hmm. we can pretty much have damn near anything. Like at this time of year, like would it be hot or whatever? I'm like, oh, I could go for a milkshake or a frosty for Wendy's. You know what I mean? Like something mm -hmm. cold mm -hmm. along those lines. You know, it's like it's very popular to like go to the store to be able to buy ice cream or We're popsicles or you know. A root beer float, bitch. Like, I haven't had one of those in a minute. Well, Arby's is doing them right now. They're doing root beer floats. They're also doing Coke floats. So if ah. you're in a pinch, like... There you go. You could do that. Um, so, or or you could just grab some root beer and grab a good thing of, of uh, vanilla ice cream and make your own. True. I always find those But if you want something boozier, you could pour over ice in a blender... Uh, flattened uh, root beer or Coke and vanilla vodka and whip that up into like mm -hmm. a smoothie. Just pour that into a glass and then drink that. Just say it. Mm -hmm. um, not that I've ever done such a thing. But the thing about floats, the nice thing about floats, or the, one of the things that I like about floats uh, is, especially when you make them yourselves, is the the I don't know what you would call them exactly, but the bubbles that are made, the foam, which instead of being like your normal foam as if you're quickly pouring uh, just straight uh, uh, soda into a, to a uh, glass, it, it foams up, but it stays. And it's flavorful. Like the bubbles don't like come back down if you just leave it. Mm -hmm. I know what you're talking about. Bubbles, I suppose. Yeah, they're like Something well, they're because it's got the milk fats in there. I was just gonna say they're dairy bubbles, which oh. some people might not associate pleasantly. But anyways, <laughs> um, but when yeah. you're when you're doing it with with ice cream and a, a mixture of an ice cream and a root beer, I, I prefer personally. I prefer Barks root beer over A and W. A and W has a classic thing to it, but I think it's a little too smooth for me. I like the bite. That's more of the barks. 
I would making barks barks root beer floats. I have to make my own if I do. I would agree. Um, actually, I'm pretty sure the root beer floats at Arby's are barks. No, I think they're A and W. You're gonna make me look it up right now. You're gonna make me look it up right now. I'm looking right um, now. Pretty sure there's floats are. I, I was about to, and then I'm like, no, you guys you got it. It's Big beer, battered fish. I don't give a shit about that. Yep, Coke and root beer floats. It's either Coca Cola or Parks. Oh, it is Parks. Limited time offer. Twenty copyright twenty twenty. Coca Cola and Parks are registered trademarks of the Coca Cola Company. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, there we go. And All right. now you know this is not right. Arby sells <laughs> gift cards, and the gift card says curly fry cash. <laughs> Seriously, no. And now we know. Anyways, um. So, I mean, I think there's lots of things out there that, you know. I like Arby's because their fries aren't straight. In neither am I. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got the joke. Because you're kinky or you're curly, you're spicy, I mean, you're savory, yes. you're yes. hot. Yeah. That, that's that's another thing. If If... if I always have the choice between curly fries and regular fries because I'd always choose the curly fries. I don't know if Do you know what Arby's has there. that I never think about getting because I always go for a curly fry? Um, Potato cakes. Mm -hmm. They're they have those browns. <laughs> triangular hash brown cakes, and I live for tots. I love those. If I see potato fried nuggets, like tots, on a menu, I am highly inclined to get them. Because it doesn't matter if they're just the, the, the browns or if they're the nice little, little teeny tube tube tots, like classic tots. Yes. Oh, but I am also a fan of crowns. Like, so BK in the mornings with their breakfast food can have crowns so they're like a half a tot but flatter wider like a coin mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and those are good too yeah um, potato rounds so yeah i mean i think i think there's definitely you know some some stuff but yeah, it's probably one of the perfect foods because it's it's a starchy fatty salty hot mm -hmm. savory like combination yeah. Yeah. so there's that something about oh. it being, being hashed up like that it just makes it seem better i also yeah. do want to recognize um din din had said early on in the live chat about unless the food is too expensive oh no he not that one sorry go back 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 back, back. <laughs> um he said people who suffer from food addiction might feel guilty about consuming the food that they like mm -hmm. and i don't disagree with that but i don't think that's a guilty pleasure i think that's just an individual feeling guilty about the fact that they're eating something. And it could be yeah. anything. Like, it could be the fact that you ate an entire Little Caesars pizza for $5 plus tax. Um, you know, it could be that you ate an entire half gallon of ice cream. It could be that you ate an entire big bag of Doritos. Uh, you know, it could be anything. You bought something that was supposed to be made into five lunches during the course of the week, and it was your Sunday night dinner. Um, you know, you bought, an like... A casserole uh, you just made... Well, I was just going to say, you bought a bigger portion of Stouffer's Mac and Cheese or whatever your brand is, and you end up eating the whole thing when it was really, like, three or four servings. Um, yeah, like, there's... Yeah, I think things. Side note, I'm very disappointed with Kraft for not making thick and creamy mac and cheese anymore. They don't? I have not seen it for a long time. The only thick and creamy uh, mac and cheese that I can get is the ATB brand. Which, by the way, perfectly fine. It tastes delicious. It, uh, I'm, I'm totally satisfied eating it instead of a craft. But if there was craft on the shelf, I would have gotten the craft, which is more expensive because it's craft, um, over the, the, the AGB brand. But Google says that Walmart sells it. You know me. No. But the box appears to have changed. So just be prepared for that, apparently. Yeah, I do my grocery shopping with H-E-B, so. And it Maybe is for sale at Amazon? 
I'm now intrigued what the fuck Amazon sells it as because I don't really buy food from Amazon, but it could also be them basically reselling. All right, here is where this shit is redick. Okay, <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> I meant to say ridiculous, but I cut it off. Uh, because getting redicked is actually probably really fun. My point is, craft thick and creamy macaroni and cheese, seven point two five ounce box. Okay, pack of one, four dollars and forty nine cents for a single box. Mm-hmm. Set of two. Twelve dollars and thirteen cents. Holy shit! You people out your goddamn mind? It's yeah. just flour and water dried with a powdered seasoning mix. It's 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 called resellers. It's it's redunculous. Oh no! This is from Brand Craft as the seller on Amazon. Well, redunculous. the ridiculous. Like, I'm looking on Instacart. Like, I'm looking... I just typed it in in Google, Google, and right now on Instacart, it's five twenty nine for a 7-ounce box, so... Or, you could also get, weirdly, Jeff, a one-time purchase pack of 12 for $15. <clears throat> Which I suggest you jump on that shit right now, because that comes out to, what, a dollar... seven a box? <laughs> Which is still expensive in my book, but nowhere near as ridiculously expensive as like four forty seven or something. It'll be in stock on August twentieth, and you can have it for your birthday. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> One box makes three servings. Fuck you, FDA. I don't need that kind of guilt in my life. What the hell is that bullshit? Oh, I'm loving this. Anyways, so yeah, I mean, I think there's. There's definitely some stuff out there that, you know, could be considered, you know, an indulgence uh, as we've really kind of moved over into saying that. But, um, yeah, like, I mean, uh, that's my issue with pasta. Like, when you buy pasta, it could be hella expensive. And I'm like, it is not worth it. Sorry. Like, yeah, pasta in a box. mac and cheese is, is not in stock at walmart.com. Right. But there, it's 98 cents a box. And here's, like, I get that things go up in price, but... As a poor white boy living in the panhandle of Florida for a winter, I survived on mac and cheese and tuna fish for like five months. And I had no money hardly. And I was living rent free with my bestie, well, best friends at the time, two of them, that I had helped move down there. So my weekly schedule of a meal was once a day I would eat and I would either eat a single box of macaroni and cheese, generic brand, that I bought for 33 cents a box. So I bought three boxes for a dollar. Mm-hmm. Or I would buy a generic can of tuna fish for 50 cents. Mm-hmm. So every day I would basically have mac and cheese. And on opposite days, I would add tuna fish to it, which disgusted my best friend, H., she was like, that is disgusting because she was brought up on like casserole type crap like that that she hated. So God bless her yeah. all these years later for still being my best friend because that was <laughs> a thing that I put her through that I would make that pretty much every other day. But and casseroles are one of the greatest things in all the world. Uh, and of course, you have to be able to make the right casseroles. I've got recipes. And I finally figured out, like, I went through a phase where I was like, it, it don't matter what it is. If it's casserole, I'm, all, I'm down for it. Like, I'm all about it. And what I realized is the reason why I think I like casseroles is because you kind of get everything. Mm -hmm. They're usually savory, but there's a creaminess, but then there's usually a crunch factor because Mm -hmm. the topping or the edge, like, I think that's why people like oven baked lasagna a lot, Um, pasta bakes, like, there's just a, there's just a thing about it. So, yeah, I mean, I think, I think that's, uh, well, and I also like it because it's, it's easy to eat. Everything can be easily portioned from the casserole in bite-sized portions. Mm-hmm. With like what an ice cream scoop? I don't know what. No, you, what do you, mean you like if, if you portions? if you take a like if it, like if, uh, let's take the example of my mac and cheese casserole, which is super easy. A box of yeah. thick and creamy mac and cheese, a pound of ground beef, and. Uh, uh, a can of what I would prefer 
Uh, I know what I mean. And a can of uh, uh, condensed uh, uh, cream of mushroom soup. Mix it up, bake it in a half an hour in a 350 degree oven. Super easy. So you take a slice of that out, but then when you eat it, you can just do a fork, which easily cuts through, and you can just pop it in your mouth. You don't have to like bite off anything. What is the slicing thing? I'm lost. <laughs> do you just take the entire casserole dish and just eat from the casserole dish? That sounds personal as a question. <laughs> But, I mean, you take your a portion very from pointed. the casserole dish, <laughs> put it on a plate, then you Actually, take your fork, and then different. you cut off the bite. I feel like and, attacked. And, no. it's a, and you can it's easily a... take, take it as a bite-sized portion. Um, I have maybe, in my past, eaten in my sink standing up from a container. Like, you're fine. I have also taken said preparation vessel to my living room as a single person who lives by themselves and sat on the couch and eaten directly out of said container. So, <laughs> I don't know. I just find it easier to 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 take a portion out, put it on a plate, and eat it from the plate. Then I go back and get another portion about five minutes later because I finished the other portion. Why are we dirtying a dish? This is what I'm lost on. <laughs> This is off of you. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, I'm sitting here trying to like yeah. answer this question but my about. My casserole dishes are so heavy, it's much easier to carry a plate. And plus, it's easier just kind of like. Well, heads, I don't normally take that to the living room. I just stand in the kitchen. Like. <laughs> and then I have my iPad. I'm, like, I'm doing and other I'm, things. I'm doing YouTube videos. I want to sit down. Um, um, um. Um, I sit a lot in my life. That's why my ass is so wide and fat. Like, I mean, I don't. I'm doing my a service by standing and eating in the kitchen. Is the way I look at it. But you know, guilty, guilty food pleasure, <laughs> eating directly from the casserole dish. I mean, it's a thing. I mean, I so, don't. I mean, don't like... get me wrong. No judgment. <laughs> I'm just saying. It. I prefer to portion it out onto a plate. I will Don't get say me wrong, this. I use the same plate until it's all done, so I'm only turning what next is. But... Yeah, but do you have to really, truly? Yep. I don't know. Uh, my casserole dish is like a big round, thick the, uh, uh, the Pyrex glass dish. It's kind of a little unwieldy. Especially if it's hot out of the oven and I don't want it's a little bit harder to, to really do anything well, about it. Well, you usually let it settle. Like, you have to... I mean, I have to let it settle for, like, like in an hour, but... Oh. Anyways. You just need to distract yourself. Like, you need 15 to 20 minutes. Just leave it sit out. It's kind of like meat when you let it rest. So, you know, you just... I don't know. Go take a healthy BM in the bathroom. Like, go watch a, <laughs> watch a short YouTube video or oh, something. Dude, dude. You know, come back. Hard shade. I mean, uh, sure, did did I guess I don't know. Um, <laughs> you I'm like gonna leave food. you. Look, with you this. do you. I just prefer using a plate. I do be pretty much 365 well, days well, a year. Actually, <laughs> actually, use it. <laughs> Damn, I really should have drank tonight. Cause I know, right? <laughs> You might have been. I mean, for for my oh. mac and cheese casserole, usually I put it into a bowl, not a plate, but uh, it's still a similar issue, I suppose. So I will say this. I'm going to leave this as our parting thought as we go to wrap up. If you want to have a experience, my suggestion is the following, because I have done it. I find it transcendent. I don't think ev it's for everybody, but for those that it is, you're welcome in advance. If you have a waffle iron, and I realize that in and of itself is a luxury item, but if you have a waffle iron, or perhaps a pignini sandwich press maker of some mm -hmm, sort, mm -hmm. George you go Grill? by yourself. What's that? George Foreman Grill? Yeah, sure. Anything that cooks from like two sides, basically. And okay. you go and you buy yourself frozen potato nuggets i'm not going to use a name brand here <laughs> but basically tots mm -hmm. and you pour them inside of said device and then you close said device is this while they're still frozen yes and you experiment 
with the timing, you get some crispy ass potato heaven upon which you can top it with whatever you want. Chili, cheese, pepperoni, chili cheese, mozzarella, chili cheese, ranch, bacon, ranch, bacon, hot sauce, <laughs> spam, whatever you want. I bought a I bought a smaller <laughs> waffle iron just for the purpose of like experimenting, and I I do like waffles. Hands down, this will probably be another show at some time. I think there's a controversial discussion about pancakes versus waffles. I am a waffle person. I'm a yes. Forever. Mm. <laughs> I, so, I, I like them both for different reasons. I hear you that you're being verse about this. That's fine. Not for me. Uh, but no, so I have, I have seen the heavens. I have tasted it. I have been a convert for this. I'm telling you, like, it is good. If you get, and if you're really into this, like I am, because you'll be crazy about it. You will buy yourself a better waffle iron after you buy the first one because you'll want one that has like temperature settings, like at least some type of a range of a gauge, kind of like a toaster, like so you could make them like hotter or crispier or whatever. Um, it has a locking mechanism to hold them in. Yeah, like there's a whole there's a whole world waiting for you if you want to do that. In other words, a waffle I do not iron is a multitasker. I do not consider it guilty. It is quite the pleasure. It can be an indulgence can also be a part of your regular diet um just be aware of your cholesterol that's all i'm gonna say mm -hmm. so true true that yo but like i it, it's the it is and the fastest way to get them because at least the waffle iron waffle maker waffle iron whatever i call it that i have they will be done in probably about eight minutes so yeah. not exactly uh, din din. Pancakes and waffles, while usually use the same mix, are made slightly differently. I know because I, because part of my, the uh, uh, package that or the uh, one Instacart delivery that I got, which was completely somebody else's order, uh, included a pan a, a a mix in there, and it has a, a recipe for waffles and a recipe for pancakes. They're slightly different. Mm. So, Gary, Dan Dan's response in live chat kills me. He said, "Waffles are the drag version of pancakes." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I would say that, Dan Dan, because I think that's a bit of a disservice to drag. Because I don't consider all drag crusty and crunchy. But it can be. <laughs> just say, Damon has feelings. So I will say this: I have, like, I'm a texture person. Like we talked about casseroles and stuff. Like I have a square baking pan that has the squares. Like technically, it's titled the Pampered Chef, like brownie baking pan. Like the, it has like. Mm -hmm. The total squares. But, dude, you could make so many things in it. Like, you could put anything in that. Like, you could put mashed potatoes in each one of those and put it in the oven for a little bit, you know? So you get a little, like, little toasty goodness and you get a square of mashed potatoes. Like, sure, everything comes out square. It, who gives a shit? It's still food. It's yummy. You put it in your mouth hole, you enjoy the taste of it. That's how that works. <laughs> so, you know, I've made brownies. I've made cookies. You know, all sorts mm -hmm. of things. So. Because uh, you like the you like the crunchy like crispy edges. I like the contrast. Like I want, I want the hard and the soft. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I feel that. Like that's why I love cookies. Well, certain cookies. I kind of okay. Like, a, like how much I like dick. Agreed. Hard and soft. it is hard and firm yet spongy and soft. So oh, oh my know. god. <laughs> Hey, folks. <laughs> One of our best episodes of 2020, as far as I'm concerned. Right now. I think that's the end of the show. That is the end. <laughs> so let's wrap this up before we go. David, did you eat dinner yet? No. <laughs> 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 We're sitting here like, no, I'm fine. 
Like that was the plan. I knew I would be good. Like I had a good, healthy later lunch. So I am fine with regards to food. I'm just sitting here like girl. Anyways. Wow. Now I'm horny and hungry. Wow. <laughs> time to have dinner in bed, if you know what I mean. Anyways. That's the end of the show. Oh. But anyway, Scott, take to this pop our website comes out live.com. Shoot us an email, it comes out live at gmail.com. Leave us voicemail, uh, uh, please. Because we have to like renew that on occasion, otherwise we lose it. And it's a great number. 361 COL talk at 361-265-8255. Uh, leave us funny things, random things. We really don't care what you leave on there. We'll probably play it on the show anyways. You don't even need to leave your name if you don't want to. I don't care. Uh, but we would love to hear from you and any comments you have any on the shows. Uh, what's your favorite innocent indulgent indulgence? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's something to call us about. Uh, you can also follow us on our social media outlets at it comes out live in the appropriate place of the URL, Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and YouTube. Uh, you can join our entourage chat, find out when we're starting these shows because I always put a link to the live show uh, right there. <laughs> at tinyroll.com slash telegram dash col uh, uh, hint if you are not a patron and you want the pre-show and post-show watch us live because I don't do anything to restrict anybody um, or for just a little bit of money you get all the extra content yeah you, yeah. you, you can get to watch the entire thing uh, 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 if you're a patron uh, that's at tinyroll.com slash telegram dash col uh, you can also subscribe to our Google Calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. You can see when we post when we're going to be do this, if we do post when we're going to do this, uh, or how quickly. Uh, you can go to pop over to our merch store in Zazzle slash Cubs Out Loud, uh, at the appropriate place of the URL. I'm saying it that way because Zazzle is in many countries. So you go to your, your country's version of Zazzle, do slash Cubs Out Loud. You get our store with the local pricing. Uh, you can also pop over to Patreon at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud, which I believe now also provides access for your local currency. Mm. So it should give you everything in your local currency, if I understood it. I didn't read the whole email about it, but... So you can do it that way instead of being all in U.S. dollars. Um... I don't think it's everywhere yet. Again, I didn't read the email. I just saw the subject. But uh, uh, so check that out. Again, that's at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. If you'd like to just shoot some cash because of a one-time donation or something, uh, you can do that at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. You can do some things. Uh, some things we're probably looking into is getting me a second camera so they can see me instead of having to look at my shared screen. <laughs> Uh, in order to see my camera, uh, may, might make things a little bit uh, better here. And I also have thought about a second monitor. We'll talk about that later. But a couple goals that we're looking for if we're using some of the funds that we would raise from these things. Um, you can also pop over to Apple Podcasts, rate us there, subscribe to us at Google Play Podcasts, uh, and Spotify, and maybe soon Amazon Music and Audible? Question mark? Mm. I, haven't, I haven't looked at that one, but so that's another thing to watch for. Uh, you can find me anywhere in the internet. says so box at box, might be box, cup box, something or other. Um, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as TheaterCup79 on most bear related sites and on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is not safe for work. Mm-mm. No, ma'am. It is not. If you would like to find me online, you can pretty much locate me anywhere as Gabber73. That's G A R B A R 73. Uh, there are different Twitter accounts. One ends with three X's. Figure that one out on your own. One ends in drag. Uh, or then there's just kind of the regular account. I keep that still. In other words, Gary, it is slightly complicated for you. But that's okay. There's a reason. Nah. Because you have to know what you want to follow me for. So if you want mm-hmm. general life and, and possibly political stuff, don't add anything to the end. If you want the what my favorites or my preferences or what my support is in the nudity realm, then you add three X's. And if you're interested in drag stuff, then you add the drag thing. It's not that complicated. You can actually follow all three if you wanted. There you go. I think I follow one or two. No, I follow the XXX one, because but that's for a different reason. <laughs> Truth. 
Peen. Uh, in any case, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Have a good one, y'all. <laughs>